I recently picked up a new switch called a Zyxel. I'm not sure if I say that right. GS1900-16. And what I'm going to do is show you how easy it was to map this switch. Start up the switch port mapper. And all I had to do was change the IP address to match the switch. I selected version 2C because it's faster. You get to use the bulk wraps and so it takes less time to map the switch. That's all I had to do. I just had to put public in. This doesn't mean anything down here. It was just a test. And away we go. Uh, I didn't select any additional devices to query. So we'll go ahead and map the switch. I did set the ping sweep range to match my local uh, 254 IP subnet. You can see here that it's picking up the VLAN, the interface description names. There's no voice VLAN on this because it's uh, voice VLAN only currently works with Cisco switches. That's all we can uh, do at the moment. Um, see the status, the speed, the MAC addresses of the devices attached to the port. There's only one device really, there's only one cable attached to the device actually and so you're seeing a reflection of the other devices already on the system. So this is what the switch sees from its perspective. And then these are the IP addresses, the host names, the types of interfaces which gives you an idea what kind of device it is and then we had one LLDP uh, entry and that goes to the switch port gigabit 5 on this switch right here and we got the IP address from LLDP showing here and then an IP address from our historical combined ARP table that we've been keeping here and they're the same. You can also see how long the switch has been uh, Actually, in this case, it's how long it's been up, but this is how long it has been since any change was made on that interface. And then you can see the interface indices here. Over here, you can see the summary report. You can see it only took 21 seconds to map the switch. This is the version of the program. This is information about the switch and you can see what ports are unused in this case and which ports are used. And some uh, spanning tree information um, and other information about the how long it took to get various portions of the information from the switch and then the summary of what the ARP tables found. We need ARP tables because switches typically only provide the MAC addresses right here. They don't provide the RIP addresses. So what we have to do is take and find ARP table information which contains both these. And so we pull that from various places. The switch, your uh, computer's local ARP table, and using ping sweep we do NetBIOS queries against responding devices. Um, Windows typically will respond if it's not blocked. Also um, Mac OS will also respond. So right here you can see quick information about the switch and that's how easy it was to map this new switch. Uh, very little changes required. All I had to do in the switch was just change its IP address and save that and that was it. The switch was pre-configured to read with SNMP version 1 and 2 and using the community name public. That's all it was and um, this is just a quick demonstration of how to map that type of switch.